Up to this point, we have learned about different number systems, logic gates, like AND gates and OR gates, and we dabbled a little with Boolean algebra and k-maps. In this lesson, we're going to take a look at some advanced logic gates like the NAND and NOR gates and how they can be used to create a unique logic element called a latch. Back in lesson two, we learned that the AND gate looked like this and that it had a corresponding truth table that defined the four possible output states given two inputs. A very common type of logic gate is a variation of the AND gate called the NOT AND gate or NAND gate for short. It gets this name because it is a logic AND gate combined with a NOT gate, and it looks like this. The circle here represents the NOT gate. Because of the extra NOT gate, the corresponding truth table for a NAND gate has the opposite output when compared to the AND gate truth table. However, in all other respects, this logic element acts exactly as you would expect it to by following the truth table's input to output explanation. A second common but unique logic gate is called the NOR gate. Like the NAND gate, a NOR gate is a NOT OR logic gate, meaning that it is two logic gates combined into one, an OR gate and a NOT gate off of the output represented again by the circle. Just like with the NAND gate, because of the extra NOT gate, the corresponding truth table for the NOR gate is opposite the OR gate. The reason we bring up these two confusing logic gates now is because we can use them to build a logic element called a latch. Now, we're going to take a look at a logic element called a latch. Latches get their name because after receiving a single logic one signal, they set their output to logic one and stay there until reset. The first latch we're going to look at is the simplest of them all. It is called the SR latch. There's two different ways to build an SR latch. The first way is to use two NOR gates with two inputs, one input feeding to each NOR gate and then connecting the second input on each NOR gate to the output of the opposite NOR gate. A little confusing, no? Well, an amazing thing happens when we make a circuit like this. It becomes what is known as a bistable element. Here's the truth table that explains how the two input signals affect the output. When the SR inputs are connected to 0, 0, the output remains the same. When the R signal or reset is changed from logic 0 to logic 1, the output signal Q is reset to logic 0. However, when the S signal or set is changed from logic 0 to logic 1, the output signal Q is set to logic 1, setting the device. Set and reset should never be at logic 1 at the same time. So we call this an undefined state. So what we have just created is a simple way to latch binary data when a logic one is detected at the set pin and reset it when a logic one is detected at the reset pin. A second way to build an SR latch is by using two NAND gates in the same configuration as before. The NAND gates output are connected to an input on the opposite gate and there is a set and reset connection to the two remaining inputs. The NAND gates have two inputs, S and R, and two outputs, Q and Q0. The resulting truth table follows a similar pattern as with the NOR gate method. However, everything is reversed. A change from logic one to logic zero is what triggers a set or reset, as you can see in the truth table I've just drawn. Aside from Boolean algebra, k-maps, and truth tables, another tool that we commonly use in digital electronics is called the timing diagram. A timing diagram, like what you see now, is a way of visually expressing the truth table of a device. There are some inputs, set and reset, and there are two outputs, Q and Q0. Just like in the truth tables for logic gates, the Q and Q0 output is either a logic one or logic zero, depending upon the input states. Here, you can see that on power up, the SR latch will have the set and reset input at logic zero, and the outputs Q at logic zero and Q naught at logic one. 
When the set input is triggered with a logic 1 signal, the output swaps states with Q getting set to logic 1 and Q0 getting set to logic 0. Then, when the reset input is triggered with a logic 1 signal, the output swap back. Q is now logic 0 and Q0 is a logic 1. Although it might seem like a strange way to display what is happening, these timing diagrams are actually extremely useful at visually showing you how outputs of a system will react to inputs. After all that theory, your brain probably wants a break and some practical medicine to see how this stuff really works. First we're going to want to build an SR latch using NOR gates. Here's the full schematic for this experiment. You can see the SR latch here, and we'll use two push buttons to set or reset the latch. To build this circuit, you'll need the jumper wire kit, a breadboard, and from the components kit, we'll need a 9 volt battery connector, 7805 5 volt regulator, four 100 ohm resistors, two 10 kilo ohm resistors, four red LEDs, two push buttons, a 74HC02, and a 9 volt battery. First, we'll connect the 7805 5 volt regulator into the breadboard. The 9 volt connector's red wire connects to the input at pin 1, and the black wire connects to the ground at pin 2. Next, we connect the 7805's pin 3 to the red power bus on the breadboard with a yellow wire, and then connect pin 2 to the ground bus with a green wire. Using a red wire, we will connect the two power buses of the breadboard together. The 7402 IC goes in the middle of the breadboard with the two push buttons to its left. From this point, we will follow the schematic and use jumper wire to connect the circuit together. Once the connections are finished, it should look like this. The left two LEDs represent the logic level of the set and reset inputs. The right two LEDs represent the Q and Q0 outputs. So let's power it up and experiment. On power up, notice that the input LEDs are both off, but one output LED, Q0, is on, while the Q output is off. This is exactly as we saw in the truth table. Now following the truth table, if we push the set button, the latch output should turn on, as it does. Similarly, if we push the reset button, the output should return to its previous state, as it does. The SR latch doesn't like receiving logic 1 1 for set and reset, so the output can potentially be unpredictable if we press both buttons at the same time. Really, this simple latch is meant to receive a short logic 1 pulse to tell it to set or reset its output. Since we've verified that the NOR gate SR latch works as expected, let's go ahead and do the same for the NAND gate version. For reference, here's the schematic for the NAND gate style of SR latch that we looked at before. To build this circuit, we will use all the same parts, but this time we will use a 74HC00 NAND gate IC. The construction process is almost exactly the same for this circuit. The differences are that the buttons are connected to ground, and the input pins to the 74HC00 are pins 2, 3, 5, 6. So we'll move through the construction phase a little faster this time. When we push the set button, it sends a logic 0 pulse to the SR latch, setting the output Q to logic 1. Pushing the reset button does exactly as we expect and resets the state to how it was on power up. Pushing both set and reset at the same time results in a 1 1 output. However, this latch should never receive both a set and reset at the same time. So, as you can see, the NAND gate SR latch operates exactly the same as the NOR gate SR latch, with logic levels reversed, and that there is more than one way to build what is known as an SR set reset latch. You've probably heard of computer memory. While it's always stored in binary, 
and it may be surprising to hear it, but an SR latch can be a simple form of a 1-bit memory. It has the necessary set and reset functions to control its output that is required of memory, although it doesn't have the gigabits of width and range that most modern RAM modules would have. But the SR latch serves as a simple example of how we can use digital electronics to set a single bit to logic 0 or logic 1 and have it stay in that stable state. SR latches are hard to see explicitly in the modern world, but they are still used in many places in design. Personally, I used SR latches twice while building the masochist's video card. SR latches were used to set and reset vertical and horizontal synchronization signals going to a VGA monitor. All parts in this online course were provided by the Gadgetory. Visit them at gadgetory.com slash pyroedu. The SR latch is a great first step in learning about more complex digital hardware. But to really see how stuff gets going, you need to dive into the next lesson, which is all about flip-flops.